welcome back. Say hello. She doesn't like the fire, so she might be back here barking at it at some point. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for Vlogmas Day 2. I'm not going to vlog every single day of Vlogmas because that's just too much for me. But I wanted to give you another video today on what to buy the artist in your life for Christmas. So everybody has been talking about that tweet that happened maybe last week or so about how you shouldn't buy your kids those big plastic art supply variety sets. And a lot of people had a problem with that tweet. And honestly, I understand where they were coming from. I would actually discourage you guys from buying one of those this year because that is a huge hunk of plastic that doesn't even really work. You're buying this kid a bunch of little pieces of plastic that might work twice and then they're just gonna get thrown in a closet until they're eventually thrown away. So it is wasteful any way that you kind of look at it. First, before we start, I would like to give a very small list of things that you absolutely should not buy unless your friend or family member or their parent specifically asks you for them. Number one, oil pastels. Oh my God, I have never met anybody that actually likes oil pastels. I feel like the oil pastel artists are gonna like really come for me right now, but everybody I've ever met has received a set of oil pastels for Christmas and they've hated them, always. They suck. So unless somebody asks you for like oil pastels because they think they're just gonna like bring back Rococo, Mm -mm. Don't do it. Save your money. Don't buy wooden pallets for people. I know it's not sustainable to have plastic pallets. I get it. But in that case, just use a glass pallet because at least you can like scrape off the paint. With wooden pallets, it binds into the fibers of the wood and then it gets all hard on top and then you have to sand it. And sanding any kind of paint makes it toxic. So don't buy people wooden pallets. Just don't. Also, if somebody is over the age of, I don't know, nine, and they claim to be really into art, do not buy them a massive set of Crayola crayons unless they specifically ask for it. Just don't. Also, don't buy people those huge pink erasers. Why? So I thought I would assemble a list of art supplies that you guys could buy on any budget. We're gonna range between, I think the lowest price item is $6 and the highest priced item is $44. So I've assembled about 20 products that would work great for kids over, I would say nine years old, all the way up to young adults and people in college or just somebody in your life that you know that is an artist and you wanna get them something that you know that they'll like and they'll use. I'm gonna be giving kind of a range of prices for each of these items. The lowest end prices usually come from Amazon and I'll show you uh, screenshots of what they'll look like when you go shopping for them. It's weird, it's like this video isn't gonna be sponsored by Amazon, rather it's like me telling you to go buy stuff at Amazon, so like I'm sponsoring Amazon. I don't know how I feel about this. Anyway, let's get into it. So I wanted to start with painting specifically oil and acrylic paints. We will be moving on to drawing later and other kinds of media. I wanted to talk about brushes first. So there are so many expensive brushes that you can buy individually and looking at all of that can be very stressful. <laughs> but normally you can actually find really premium brands will make value sets of brushes and that's what I recommend you go with. Royal and Langnickel makes a big brush set for around $10. Oh, also, if, even if the person you're buying for is an oil painter, I would steer clear of buying oil brushes because every oil painter that I know hates those brushes. Try to get brushes that are meant for acrylic or mixed media. The next two things that I would recommend are items that you can use to clean your brushes. So for oil painters, I recommend, and I have it right here, the Silly Coil. I got this for $15 at Michael's. Amazon has it for $7 right now, or $8. It ends up being about $8. This is really, really cool. What you do is you fill it up with solvent right above this little spring in here, and you rub your brush on the spring, and then the particles of paint sink to the bottom. So you end up having fresh, clean solvent at the top to continue to clean your brushes over a long period of time. This is such a popular item with oil painters. You will not go wrong if you get this. Even if somebody already has this, having more than one is perfectly fine. 
So for acrylic painters, a similar product that's much, much cheaper is called the paint puck. It's a little piece of silicone that you put in the bottom of your water jar and it just basically creates a surface that you can rub your brush on and all the acrylic paint will come out. A set of paint pucks usually runs about $14, but you get three in that package, so it's a really good deal. Something that I really feel for with people that are trying to buy for an artist is when you go into a store and you want to buy them the paint that they use. Like, oh, I wanna give them this set of paints and they're so expensive. If somebody is really taking painting seriously, they're usually using like Liquitex Heavy Body or they're using Gamblin. That stuff ain't cheap. So what I would recommend to do, if you're awesome, get them a the biggest tube you can find of the brand that they like of titanium white. For acrylic, I would recommend getting Liquitex. For oil, I would recommend getting Gamblin for this. If you wanna do something a little bit more exciting, I would suggest getting them a fun color of paint. This is something that artists usually don't spend money for themselves on. Usually when we go into the store, we just sort of replenish our set of blue, yellow, white, and red, and black, pretty much. So if the person you're buying for is using acrylic paint I would recommend quinacridone magenta bright aqua green and vivid lime green and I would recommend the brand Liquitex heavy body they usually run about $12 per four ounce tube and for oil I would recommend the 35 milliliter Gamblin artist oil which runs about $12 in either sap green radiant turquoise dioxazine purple or cobalt violet the next item that you could get that would really, really impress your artistic friend would be a liquid medium. So if the person you're buying for is using acrylic paint, I would recommend the Liquitex Pro Glazing Fluid, which runs six to $15, depending on the size that you get. Or I would recommend the Liquitex Blending Medium, which we all know I go on and on about. For oils, you have a lot more options as far as useful mediums. So I would recommend the Gamblin Medium Set, which runs $24. You get a set of small, various mediums that you can play with. This is good for people just starting out in oils. Winsor & Newton makes something called Liquin, which is a medium that speeds drying. It runs about $10 for the small batch. Winsor & Newton also makes linseed oil, which is essential for any oil painter. You can't go wrong with this one. When you're trying to buy products for a painter, I find that it's best to try to buy them stuff that they don't want to buy themselves. And the thing that I hate buying myself is gesso. Gesso is absolutely essential. What it does is it primes your canvas and gives you a beautiful, smooth surface to start your painting on. It works for either acrylic or oil. Gesso can run you anywhere between $10 to $25, depending on the quality and the size that you get. In my opinion, the Liquitex Basics version of Gesso is perfectly acceptable and it will impress your artist friend. So what about painting surfaces? Everybody thinks like, oh, I should buy them a canvas. Well, yeah, canvases are awesome, but there's a lot of other options as far as painting surfaces that you might wanna consider when buying somebody a Christmas gift. The cheapest option for anybody painting with oil or acrylic is going to be a mixed media pad like this one. This one ran me, I think, I think $15, let me check. Yeah, I think this one cost me about $15. Let's talk about this. So, see how it says mixed media on here? That is not enough. When you're shopping in the store, definitely look for mixed media, but the most important thing you need to look at is the weight right here. Mine says 184 pounds per, per 300 sheets. When you're looking for these in the store, make sure that you get the highest weight possible. The reason for that is when you're using oil or acrylic on paper, obviously it's wet, right? And what does paper do when it gets wet? It kind of gets wavy, we call it buckling, right? You don't want that, especially if you're giving it to somebody. So to avoid that, the best thing to do is to get the highest weight paper possible, which means that you're getting the highest quality paper possible. So that's my spiel on that. Moving on, the next thing that everybody knows about is canvases. Canvases are gonna be the next most expensive thing that you could get somebody. If you're buying for, let's say, a kid between the ages of like nine and 13, it's perfectly acceptable for you to go ahead and get a value pack of like the basic grade canvases. That's fine, don't worry about it. But if you're shopping for, let's say, like a teenager or somebody in college or like just an artist friend, you definitely wanna get them a canvas that is one, at least eight by 10 in size, and two, you need to at least get them studio grade canvases. It will be a lot smoother. It's gonna be a much higher quality surface with no little bumps or chunks in the primer for your artist friend to work with, and that is invaluable. You don't wanna be working against your canvas. So 
at least get them studio grade canvases. If it's somebody older, try to get them artist grade or gallery grade canvases. That's my advice. The next thing that you can get, which for some reason nobody ever thinks about, are these cradled wood panels, which I really want to work with. I've actually never worked with them before. One of the most expensive options you can get as far as painting services is something called gesso board. You can buy them on Amazon in pretty big packs. This is going to be, again, the more expensive option but it is the nicest option. It's for somebody that is maybe a professional artist or somebody that's in college for art or something like that. If you can afford it, try to buy your friend that, depending on how much you love them, I guess. All right, so that's all the painting supplies I'm gonna talk about right now that I think you should get. Let's move on to drawing supplies. So this might apply more to younger people, maybe people from ages nine to 16, or adults even, that really love to draw. First thing on the list, and you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, are Bic mechanical pencils. I personally still use them. I used to have a set of really nice mechanical pencils where like the lead was separate and it was like a whole thing, and I still reach for Bic mechanical pencils. <laughs> They're great, everybody likes them. You can get a pack of 40 of those for $10 on Amazon. The next thing that you can get for drawing, which is essential for painting as well, are charcoal pencils, white and black. You can get a set of four charcoal pencils and a kneadable eraser for $5 on Amazon. Colored pencils. Everybody talks about Prismacolor colored pencils and don't get me wrong, they're incredible, but they're also the most expensive. So I came up with an alternative for that, which are the Arteza color pencil set. You can either get a set of 48 Arteza color pencils for $25 or 72 pencils for $36. The best thing to go with the Arteza pencils is a black sketchbook. No, not a sketchbook with a black binding. I mean, a sketchbook full of black paper. And you think I'm crazy, but this is a great thing for young artists to play with and for older artists to play with. Toned paper is just, it's a great secret, and we all should tell each other about it. So, Arteza has a set of three black sketch pads for $23. So that's 150 sheets for $23. That's incredible. The next thing is Micron pens. Everybody loves these. You can get this set for $8 on Amazon, but if you want to splurge a little bit more, there are Micron fine liners for $19, which are awesome. Something that nobody thinks about, unless y you do, and I never think about when I'm going to buy myself something in the store, is transfer paper. And if you don't know what that is, it's paper that has charcoal, basically, or graphite on one side. You put it between your sketch and the surface that you want your finished product to be on, and you can trace and then it like appears on the canvas or whatever you're trying to create your final piece on. It's super, super, super useful and you should buy it for the artist in your life because they deserve it and they probably don't remember to buy it every time they go to Michael's. Arteza makes great transfer paper which is $11 for 60 sheets. All right, so we're gonna move on to other mediums and I wanna talk about watercolor for a second. I am not a watercolor person, okay? I use Van Gogh watercolors in a tube and I hear that people that actually do watercolor hate those, so I'm not gonna recommend that. Winsor & Newton has little pocket palettes that I think run about $11 to $15, and these are a great gift. I'm not gonna talk about markers in this video because honestly I don't know anything about markers except for Copics and Posca's are the best, and they're both really expensive, so you're on your own for that one. And I wanted to give a few miscellaneous items that are just more honorable mentions. Like if you really want to go out there and get some great stocking stuffers for your artist, this is what you should buy. One of the essentials for me is palettes, plastic palettes that have plastic lids with them. I will not tell you how many times I have let globs of acrylic paint dry because I just didn't really have anything to do with the palette. But if you get a palette with a lid, you can put the lid on it and stick it in your refrigerator and it will last you months. No more wasted paint. The second honorable mention I'd like to throw out there sounds really, really boring, but I would personally love it if somebody bought me this. A set of nitrile gloves. Try to get nitrile, don't get latex because Everybody's allergic to latex because they use acrylic paint all the time. And yes, you can develop an allergy to latex. That's why my thumb looks like an elephant stepped on it. Also, canvas risers. These are really great for people that are into acrylic pouring. I myself don't really like acrylic pouring, but what I use it for is painting the edges of my canvas. Super, super useful. I love these and they're really cheap. So that concludes my holiday gift idea list for art supplies for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed something because I'm sure that I did. Let me know if there was any gift that you received as like an older child or teenager that you just cringe at now. Good luck. 
out there shopping for the artist in your life. I know that you will make the right decision and give them a gift that they really, really find useful and love you for. Until next time, take care guys.